Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Poco X3 Pro. A lot of you have been asking me to review the latest update of Derpfest for this wonderful device and that's what we are going to do today. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kailash, let's get going. So let's see what we have here. We have Poco X3 Pro YU and Bima Android version 12 updated on the 23rd of Feb 2022. And this says merged 1200R32 added face unlock support. It works really well, trust me. Added direct quick setting styled, added long click action for HBM and CABC quick setting style. Enable fuse pass through for better SD card performance, fix memory leak problem on Dirac fix some VNDK related issues, fix thermal ID inconsistency problem, fix video en encoding problem on Gcam, GPS HAL improvement, improve rise to wake accuracy, that is another good thing, switch to QTI Bluetooth HAL, merge Linux stable, that's for the kernel, added support for fuse pass through, added support for WireGuard VPN, backport several binder changes and fix timing issues on power supplies work queues now i do know that a lot of stuff there is technical but these are things which are good to know even a few things from here if we can understand they will definitely give us an insight as to what exactly has changed and are these changes applicable to us is it a problem that was faced by me or somebody who's using this wrong now the notes section does say oss based include gapps firmware 12.0 se linux enforcing safety net should pass don't pm dev report bug on this particular term i'm not gonna pronounce that anyways that's everything from this kernel and we will talk about the benchmark numbers towards the end of the video but that's for later there is a surprise a not so good surprise and that doesn't really impact your overall experience on this particular rom now let me tell you this with time the fest has gotten really really good and the good update or the good information that i have for you guys is a lot of you have been telling me that in the last zone especially when playing competitive in bgmi or pubg mobile the you know phone is lagging on this particular rom so we will probably talk about that in a later video as well for now the moment you boot into this particular rom you will see that this is a minimalist rom it doesn't come with a lot of you know bloatware it does come with google camera go so that is a good thing and you do have themed icons and material you doing a splendid job over here this beautiful android widget over here doing a great job to the left of course you have google feed as you can see over here it is smooth as ever now trust me you know the story continues from my previous video as well that this is by far one of the best roms that is available for the poco x3 pro in terms of stability battery backup charging speeds camera performance and somewhat gaming performance as well remember for a long time this rom was one of the roms which was scoring really really high on benchmarks although synthetic benchmarks don't really really mean much so as you can see you know the app icon animations are super smooth and fluid the whole ui is fluid and it works absolutely fine no problem whatsoever and as i said you know there is not a lot of bloatware that is included in this particular rom so if you actually go to settings you go to about phone you press on the Android version, you will see that this is Derp Fest official Xion YU 23rd of Feb is what the build is. The security patch is of February and the kernel is the Shaldia Derp kernel. It does come with SE Linux status enforcing. Widevine L1 is working fine. If we talk about Play Store certification, let's go ahead and see over here. Let's go to settings and device is certified so your banking application should be working fine your netflix and amazon prime should be working in hd absolutely okay along with butter smooth experience in the whole ui now of course if you talk about the screen refresh rate i have kept it to 120 hertz always because that's what i do on most of the custom roms to get maximum smoothness and as i've said in so many occasions this particular device the poco x3 pro does come with a 5160 milliamp hour cell so even at 120 hertz all day you should not really really have a problem now there are quite a lot of features that are available in this particular rom for example there is thermal profiles which does give you access to 180 hertz touch sampling rate resistant area sensitivity responsivity these options are present at the same time if you go to the apps section you do have a dedicated game space which does come with customizations of its own and it does really make a difference in your gaming experience so those are good things as well and people who have been using this rom 
change the thermal profiles to your game change the you know gaming settings add your game to the game space you will probably notice an improvement as far as the gaming experience is concerned now the most important part of any custom rom of course is the customization menu and that's what we see over here we have derp space on android 12 which has gotten to a level where you have a ton of customization you can do a hell lot of things and it really really you know gives you that feeling which makes your phone your own by doing all the customization you need now you do have battery settings over here in which you can go ahead and enable the battery percentage battery style battery bar and just look at the amount of options that you have even for the battery bar you have a ton of options available over here you do have the carrier label function then clock and date settings status bar items Traffic indicators is something you can enable or disable and that will be visible over here. You do have some miscellaneous tweaks like the Derpfest logo over here. Colored icons in the status bar is something that looks really, really nice. And then you have a ton of customization at the bottom as well. Now moving on, as you can see, you have notifications for ambient edge lighting. You can enable notification count, heads up. Blink flashlight for incoming calls, vibrate on connect, vibrate on call waiting and vibrate on disconnect. These features are present as well. You do have a ton of customizations for your quick settings as well. So, you know, these are good things. And the best part is these customizations are present in this particular ROM and they don't really clutter your ROM or give you errors and stuff like that. It's actually a very cohesive and universal experience is what I can say. Now we have lock screen shortcuts over here, as you can see. Then you have lock screen UI customization in which you do have the disable ripple effect option. So the ripple effect works fine. You do have ambient and always on display. Now I would not recommend you to use always on display on this device because this is a LCD panel and it will probably eat into your battery. So you can use lift up display and features like those. You do have the battery charging light. You do have the monet override customization pulse customization, you have navigation bar, and then you have some general settings as well. So as far as customization is concerned, this ROM doesn't fall short at all. As far as UI smoothness is concerned, this ROM will give you probably the best performance as far as UI smoothness is concerned. Even the battery backup on this particular ROM is rock solid. As you can see over here, I've used the screen barely, but in my previous days, I'm easily getting seven to eight hours of screen on time with about one hour of gaming and the frame rates in casual gaming are pretty good as well. Now I understand when you're going to do, you know, professional gaming, the device might struggle even on a custom ROM, but for 90% of the people out there, you won't really have a problem. If you play two, three, four hours a day, this device will work perfectly fine with this particular ROM. Now that said, let's talk about the important factor that is the benchmark numbers for which the first thing that we will check it Google Photos for screenshots, right? Now as you can see over here, the CPU throttle just to 93% of its max performance. This is with the game mode enabled and thermal profile set to benchmark. And you have the average score of 178, 994 GIPS. So this is pretty good as far as the score is concerned. Even if you go to Antutu benchmark over here, you will see that the score is pretty rock solid, 580 to 934. But this has actually gone down from the 603 or 610,000 that we were getting. I've ran this benchmark twice or thrice and I don't really see what was the reason for this score to drop. That might be optimization and benchmark numbers are just for fun, you know, some analysis to be done here and there but don't really judge your phone's performance based on the benchmark numbers now let's quickly go ahead and have a look at the geekbench scores as well now as you can see over here single core 733 multi core 2440 this is also after two to three runs at 28 29 degrees celsius and uh, different uh, attempts i made but we are getting low scores on benchmark numbers i really don't know why but i'll tell you this as far as gaming is concerned battery backup charging is concerned stability is concerned this rom is doing a splendid job there is no problem whatsoever that i had in this rom you can definitely use this as a daily driver i've used the earphones the bluetooth and all sorts of things to use this phone as a daily driver wi-fi calling works fine the only thing that i've not tried is carrier video calling but apart from that call connectivity internet connection wi-fi mobile data everything is working fine so what i mean to say here is the fest's latest update builds up on the previous version the performance numbers might look a little down but the performance is still the same 
rock solid, smooth update and the same thing goes for the Mi 11X and the K20 Pro on which the reviews are coming in the next couple of days and then we will have a speed test across all the three devices. So before we wrap this video up, if you want to support us, check the pinned comment. We've started launching our accessories, the smartphone cases, we have transparent cases, we have camera slider cases and smoke cases as well and they are available at a very very reasonable price of around 149 rupees on Amazon. Go ahead and buy them, support us, it will not cost you anything and you will get a beautiful case. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.